right, Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade here. It is time to track the tropics. Of course, we are now into not the first, not the second, but the third day of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. And so far, things have been fairly quiet, but we're already monitoring the potential for maybe a uh, disturbance to develop into a tropical depression, maybe briefly a tropical storm, low chance, but we're monitoring one area in the U.S. or close to the U.S. and we're also keeping a track on our potential for additional activity for the rest of the season. So NOAA, of course, before the season started, predicted a range of 13 to 19 name storms. Out of those, they're thinking six to 10 will become hurricanes and out of those three to five likely will become major hurricanes. So that's a little above the norm. So we're thinking it's still going to be a fairly busy season, even though it's been on the quiet side for the most part to start. Colorado State University meteorologists predicting 17 named storms before the hurricane season officially began out of those nine becoming hurricanes and out of those four likely becoming major hurricanes. So notice our average numbers, 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes. That's what we usually get in an average year. So both of the big preseason forecasts calling for a uh, higher than average number of tropical systems for this season. So don't panic, just make sure that you are prepared for what could be another busy hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. All right, we are now officially into the month of June. So if we get something popping out there, something cranking, something brewing, where would it be typically? Well, typically it's gonna be anywhere in the Gulf, maybe north northwestern parts of the Caribbean Sea and maybe western sections of the Atlantic. And guess what? That's exactly the area that we are monitoring right now. So we do have water temperatures out there that are fairly warm. For much of the Gulf, temps in the low 80s, low to mid 80s for portions of the Northwest Caribbean. So we've got water warm enough to support some tropical activity, but do we have anything to worry about? Well, the chance is low, but ever since yesterday, we've been monitoring this cluster of showers and storms. Some of this action rolling over the Florida Peninsula, some of it kind of hanging out just offshore, but we actually have what we call an upper level low. This is going to be at this point in the eastern Gulf, and we've got a fairly active jet stream. So we're continuing to get these showers and storms cranking up and kind of rolling over some of the same areas. Now, some of these showers and storms are starting to kind of push offshore, and a few of the models are indicating that there could be some organization. Maybe we could have a low developing at the surface, and it could start to take on potentially some tropical or subtropical characteristics. So it's a teeny tiny chance, but there is a small chance chance we could have our first tropical system officially in the Atlantic Basin over the next two to seven days. But look at this. 10% chance and it would not be coming to the Houston area, but that non-tropical low pressure may form off of the southeastern U.S. coast. Low could develop some tropical characteristics, and if that happens, it likely would just kind of hang out just offshore, just right off of the Georgia and Carolina coast. So bottom line, whether we get a tropical system or not, there's still going to be some impacts. There's going to be increased wind gusts here, of course. There's going to be the potential for some heavy rain and that could lead to flooding, maybe some water spouts. You can see our exclusive Fox weather model Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. showing the area of showers and storms trying to get a bit more organized, maybe a little area of low pressure trying to develop there right off of the Georgia and Carolina coast. That would be near Savannah, Charleston, maybe eventually getting up towards Wilmington on Thursday. So notice if we get a system, there could be some impacts with some stronger wind gusts, some heavy rain. But if we don't get a system, it's still going to be a big rainmaker potentially for this area. So if you do have some vacation plans here, maybe some business trips planned over the next two to seven days, keep in mind that whether we get a tropical system or not, there will be the potential for heavy rain and flooding. So notice in between Savannah, Georgia, up to Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, anywhere from two to three inches of rain between today and the first half of the weekend. And so we're monitoring that threat for our first tropical system. Of course, the first name on the list, if we got a tropical storm, would be Andrea, but the chance is extremely low. And like I said, it's not heading towards H-Town. So good news there. 
Let's talk about what could be heading towards the Houston area, what likely is heading here, and that's going to be Saharan dust. We kind of got a Saharan dust invasion that will be taking place over the next few days, likely starting to impact us on Thursday, but peaking on Friday and Saturday. So that Saharan dust will reach H-Town all the way from Africa. We actually have storms in Africa that kind of kick up that dust, and it gets swept all across the Atlantic through the Caribbean and into the Gulf and it's going to be right on top of us for Friday and Saturday. That's when it's going to be the thickest kind of causing that white ish tint to the sky and also the hazy skies will be pretty imminent for Friday and Saturday and there could be some air quality issues as well as that haze that dust in the air could make the air quality a little worse than what we're used to. So let's track it for you. It's going to be the dark brown colors you see on our Saharan dust tracker. Notice that darker brown getting closer to Houston for Friday and Saturday. That's going to be the worst of it before things kind of start to improve. So plan on a dusty into the work week heading into the weekend, but we're not expecting extreme dust, but you will likely notice some haze in the sky. Now, as far as our names for this hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, like I said, if that system off of the southeast U.S. coast developed into a tropical storm, the first name will be Andrea. Then we go all the way through this list. Barry, Chantal, Dexter, Gabrielle, Fernand, Umberto, Imelda, all the way down to Wendy. So it looks like we'll likely use quite a few of those names this season, but we're hoping we don't have to deal with anything, but it looks like there is a decent shot for a fairly busy season. As far as hurricane categories, of course, last year, Barrel was a higher end cat one. So that's on the lower end of the Saffir Simpson scale. Imagine getting a major hurricane, cat three, cat four, cat five that will cause massive damage so we're hoping we don't get that but you always want to be prepared because during hurricane season it only takes one system one tropical storm one hurricane to make it a bad season for you so make sure that you are getting your emergency gear ready because we're just getting started we are basically into the first few days of hurricane season and notice the peak late august into september and then we start to kind of go down the roller coaster october still a little activity possible in the first couple of weeks here Usually after week two in October, our chance for a tropical system really starts to fall off. And of course, hurricane season officially ends on November 30th. All right, before I go, I want to give you a update on what you can expect. Maybe you're hopping on a cruise ship or you have family, friends, maybe on Royal Caribbean, Carnival, one of the other big cruise lines and heading to Cancun. Well, if you're heading there tomorrow, you can plan on a pretty big chance for some heavy downpours, some showers, some storms, temperatures in the middle 80s. So not the best cruise weather. This is your time to relax, to have a little fun and the weather is not going to be that great. However, if your cruise plans take you through Cancun for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the way through the weekend, things will start to improve. It does get brighter, but it gets hotter. Those temperatures near 90 degrees, but it looks like the majority of that rain will be pushing out. So 